going to load up the browser. I'm going to use the uh, widget here on the home screen pulled up. This is just a New Jersey Transit's uh, mobile version of their rail schedules. Notice I can easily pull up new tabs though. This browser is based on Chrome, so it operates quite a bit differently. So you can open any number of tabs, scroll across the top and get to the one you want. Intelligent zooming, multi-touch zooming as well. Go up to the top here, you'll see the normal things for adding a bookmark, searching or accessing your bookmarks. Up here we go into settings, I can show you an interesting set of controls called quick controls you can enable. It changes the user interface of the browser a bit. So you notice that there's no longer the URL bar and things like that up top. So say I were to go here into a new page. Now to access these shortcuts, I just pull my finger over from the edge of the screen and I can go back for example. Or go into bookmarks again. It's very slick. There's no flash support built into this right now, but Adobe has promised it within the next few weeks. Let's see if I can go to our site right here. The mobile version obviously doesn't look so good on a huge display like that, but here is the regular version. Renders pretty quickly. I have noticed some problems with the browser um, where it's you know, when you go to a page, I don't know if it's a compatibility issue or something where it just seems to hang until you stop it and then the page renders, but in general it's worked pretty well. Uh, sometimes you see some weird effects when you zoom in and out, see if I can show them to you. No, nope, everything seems to be working here right now. Hard to say what causes, the, causes them, but in general the browsing experience has been pretty good. There you go, you saw a bit of it right there, just um, blocks of the page don't update quickly as you're scrolling or zooming. Uh, otherwise though, working pretty nicely. Let's go through and I'll show you how there's a lack of Adobe Flash right now. So when I tap through here, it's actually going to load up the YouTube client instead. Hi, this is Michael Worrell from Open Tap here and I can go into full screen mode. Pretty good quality. It's not HD. It uh, appears to be just in high quality mode, um, but still looks pretty good on the 10.1-inch uh, display. Again, some issues with probably flash, um, the ads, but in general everything worked pretty well. It's still a very much a 1.0 kind of release even though it's Honeycomb 3.0. You can tell it's not been out for long. I'm going to show you some of the Honeycomb specific applications I've managed to get a hold of right now like Google Body, which I'm sure you saw in the event that Google held. It's a nervous system view. This is Dungeon Defenders. I'm going to see if I can show you how it works. Should be some bad guys coming here.
Here's another game called Cordy. I have to admit, I don't quite understand how to play it. I'll pull up Grocery IQ here. It's another honeycomb specific application. You can see how it you know has that nice paned look, you know, multiple panes and stuff, really pretty cool looking. Now just as you see on the Android smartphones, we've got the ability to put contact widgets down here that allow you to quickly, you know, send off a message or, you know, in this case you can't place a call, but you can view the contact information. But they also have a separate thing in Honeycomb that shows you status updates from, you know, that person's uh, Google status. Uh, we don't happen to use it here at Mobile Burn, so I don't have any examples to show you, but you can see where it come up in the status would go in here and it would automatically live update. You might also have noticed at some point that some of these widgets here have scrolled automatically like that one just did there. Um, that happens, these are slightly animated. In any case, let's go into contacts. You can see what that looks like and also show you the keyboard. I've disabled the Bluetooth keyboard so I can show you how it works. You can see I just type Jack and I got Jack Black or I can type BL and match up with a number of different people. Right now I'm pulling in contacts from multiple Google accounts as well as an Exchange server. This button here makes the keyboard go away. scrolling through here. So attractive looking application. And just like other native honeycomb applications, there are controls that you can easily get to up here at action bars, you know, for editing or for adding a new contact. And of course I would be remiss if I did not show you angry birds running on the uh, large display. Oh, so close. I've not been able to get the uh, Google Talk video chat to work. I don't really have anybody to chat with and it doesn't support the phones right now. So I'm going to show you a Fring instead just to show you that it does indeed work. It's an inbound call from me and you can see right here I'm holding my Nexus S in my hand. Video quality is pretty decent on Fring at least. I also wanted to show you that the uh, home screen and everything, of course, works in portrait mode. A little bit of wasted space because of the aspect ratio and everything, but um, in general, all works the same way. And if I can, of course, flip it into landscape mode again. And everything continues exactly how it was. Um, interesting, we'll go back into I guess Gmail here and show the differences in how you can switch back and forth between the different views. Now if I go into portrait mode here, you see we lose the pained look with multiple panes, and I go back into landscape mode, it comes back. I'm going to show you the touchdown exchange client that I use too. Um, third party exchange client, it has a very much like an Outlook type view to it. Panes for moving through uh, 
different types of information, you know, emails, contacts, calendar, tasks, notes. Very, very well done. Uh, I've been using it for quite a long time now on uh, my smartphones as well. I'm going to pull up maps here so you can see how it works. It's just like the uh, version we have on smartphones right now. You can change the layers, turn on satellite view and that kind of stuff. Pull up the gallery. You can see we've got a nice view of all the images and you can tap on any random one and see a kind of a film strip along the bottom so you can quickly navigate through them while still getting the full effect. I go back, um, here's some photos I took with the zoom itself. Another cool application is the movie studio. This is a standard part of Honeycomb and allows you to string together still photos and video into one movie. You can see there's a still photo and it switches over to a video. That's uh, Peter Rojas's foot. There's Albert again from Verizon. Very cool. And then you can save everything out, of course. So that's my walkthrough of Android 3.0 Honeycomb on the Motorola Zoom. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Michael Orl for MobileBurn.com.